There are four days until Gen Con. That's, well, it's more reasonable. Hi, long time no post from me on YouTube. Life has been crazy. Uh, I got a new job. I am now teaching programming here in Portland and it's super awesome and super exciting, but it turns out making curriculum is super tough. So all of my free time kind of evaporated, but I am still going to Gen Con. And so that means that I'm still very excited about getting all the things that are at Gen Con. So yeah, I'm using Board Game Geeks uh, list thing of the Gen Con 2015 preview and I've gone through it several times over the last few weeks as it keeps building and building and building and I have made my list of things that I'm interested in at Gen Con to check out and so I figured what the heck I'd pick 10 of my top ones and I'd tell you them in a video and so that's what we're gonna do. Okay, so I'm going to preface this entire thing with the fact that I know that some of these games have been out um, either because they were on Kickstarter and the Kickstarter backers are starting to get them, so people do have these in the world, but for the public, they've been released for the first time at Gen Con, and I am public because I have not been backing games on Kickstarter for reasons. Um, so there. Also, some of these games are reprints of games that have been unavailable for a really long time. It's like a revival thing happening, which super excites me. Um, and then also, I think, no, none of these are expansions. So yeah, but all of these are games that I, in theory, if I was fast enough, could purchase a Gen Con after having gone and demoed and seen what it's like, okay? So, here we go. Number 10 on my list is Survive Space Attack, published by Stronghold Games. Um, it's got a slew of designers who I'm not actually gonna list right now because I would butcher all of the pronunciations of their names. Um, but uh, Survive Escape from Atlantis? Survive has been a very long uh, popular game and they just did like a reprint of it and it's super popular and it's fun to play with kids and non-gamers and stuff like that. So I've been interested in gaming that game for a while. But now that they're re-theming it and reprinting one, um, Space Attack, I'm like super excited about it because it's new and shiny and it's space and yeah. So, so in Survive Space Attack, you, um, you're on like a cruise ship or a boat or some space station or something um, and you are the crew and so you have to like get rid of the passengers, like make sure they're safe and then you have to, as crew members, escape yourself. So there's aliens attacking and so you can like try and get an escape pod or you can try and fight the aliens or you can just like try and get a spacesuit and like float off and all this other stuff. So yeah, it's a survival game like escape game. It apparently uses similar base mechanics and stuff like that. It also has a double-sided board, so there's more options. And yeah, pretty excited about trying out this one. I'm probably gonna demo it. I'm actually probably gonna demo all these games before I purchase them, with maybe the exception of my like top three. So yeah, we'll see. Hopefully it's fun and awesome and I end up getting a copy. So my number nine game is Monster Laundry, published by Hobbit Games and designed by Remy. Delivoras. Monster Laundry is a game about uh, doing your monsters and you're doing your laundry, um, but like it's like a dexterity matching memory game. So there's this like clothesline that goes around all the players, and like you use you have to stay far enough apart from each other so that you keep the clothesline taunt and then there's like clothespins on the clothesline and so when you find the laundry that matches your color you have to like clip it on the clotheslines that are next to you. Um, so it's just, I mean it's a kids game because it's Haba but it's fun and silly and I think that it would offer a bit more strategy potentially or at least like more engagement and fun than Dancing Eggs which is still a really fun one but yeah so I'm excited to get Monster Laundry. Also it comes in a really awesome 10 that looks like a washing machine Next up we have Deck Building, the deck building card game by uh, Christopher Bedell, uh, published by Gooder Than Games, and it is a card game uh, that is a deck builder where you are actually building 
a deck, like a like a deck that you have a patio on. Uh, this was on Kickstarter, I know, and it is listed as like a smaller kind of rabbit tea size game. Um, but yeah, it was super interesting to me because uh, one, it's punny, so that wins, and then two, it's like a low price point for a pretty straightforward deck building game that I am hoping I can introduce the concept of deck building to my family with, and also just have a nice pocket friendly travel, visually interesting deck building game to like take places and play. Um, so yeah, I'm interested in that. So pretty excited about this one and I'm probably gonna pick this one up immediately and then probably play it with Steve. Next up on my list is no surprise, it's a train game, Whee! 20th Century Limited is designed by Jeff and Carla Horger and it is being published by Rio Grande Games. Um, it is a train game that is supposedly like a blend of Ticket to Ride and Transamerica. Um, and so I'm pretty interested in that because one train game and two combination of two great train games. It's supposed to be like a little bit more strategic than Transamerica. And while it has some similar things with cards and like route planning, uh, like Ticket to Ride does, it's definitely heavier than Ticket to Ride. Um, so in the game, you are recreating the American railway system and then there's like a little bit of package delivery and stuff as well uh, so you can decide if you're gonna build things to try and fulfill demand cards so plan your routes according to that but remember your routes still have to be accurate American rail routes determined by these cards um, or you can just like build the routes for victory points slash money so yeah um, I'm pretty interested in getting a demo of this at the Rio Grande like room that they have and then trying to find a copy to buy which should be Interesting. Hmm. Next up is Gold West, uh, published by Tasty Minstrel Games and designed by J. Alex Cavern. Uh, it is a, well, it's not a prospecting game, but I guess it's kind of a prospecting game. You are building your like mining empire, trying to gain strategic resources. So it's a resource management one, one of the five resources, which are all like mining things. And then you also have to deal with area control for like the areas that you're mining. And then you also have to deal with like your supply tracks and stuff like that. Uh, I got a brief demo of this game at the 2014 Gen Con, and I was like really excited and wanted to get it then. So I'm super excited. They're gonna have some limited copies at this Gen Con, and I'm going to try really, really hard to get myself one of those copies. So yeah. Next up is Tides of Time by Christian Krilla and published by Portal Games. It is a two-player set collection drafting game. It's an 18 card game, so I'm thinking it's probably going to be kind of similar to Microcosm, um, but I'm really interested to see what this two player is all about. I actually pre-ordered it, so I'm definitely getting it already because it's a two player game, so insta buy, and it's from Portal Games, so insta insta buy. So yeah, um, it's a smaller micro game um, that will probably really be tight, and it's supposed to be really quick. It's only two takes place over like three rounds, but it, uh, for those three rounds it's supposed to be kind of like in-depth and like brainy, kind of like Microcosm is, and yeah, if we have another game that's similar to Microcosm but a different theme and like different goals and different like twists and action on cards, I'm totally for that because we love Microcosm. Next up is Ashes from Plat Hat Games by Isaac Vega. and. This is a game that Steve and I are excited about because it will kind of fulfill that collectible card game niche uh, without actually being a full collectible card game like Netrunner and stuff like that. Um, so this game is a game for two players that you can play four player with teams and I think there's a three player variant as well where you are playing these 30 card decks with, um, you have Phoenix Borns that are like your mages or whatever that are controlling it and they have these 30 card decks um, to play against each other. Um, and you there's like there's so many levels in this game because you can play with the pre-made decks or you can have another game before your first like the main game if you could call that the main game where you're actually drafting and building your decks to try and compete against each other to defeat each other so it's kind of supposedly a collectible card game in a box which is super interesting to us and the art is fantastic because it's plat hat games and we know the quality is just gonna be great and it's isaac vega so we're like yeah so we are excited about that one and i'm probably actually just gonna get it um i tried to get a demo at origins but they were just swamped continually so i'm gonna try and get a demo with steve this year at Gen Con, and if we both really dig it, we're gonna get a copy, so. Yeah. Next 
Next up is Viceroy from a whole slew of publishers. I know the original publisher is in Russia. Uh, it's got, got like Funforge and Hobby World and Mayday Games in the US and all this other stuff. Um, but Viceroy is by Yuri uh, Zerlava. Also, EG thinks that it's playtime. It's a card game with auction bidding, um, and then like you're building this like power pyramid. So you're bidding to get these cards to use them to build this power pyramid. So basically, like you're the viceroy and you want to build your power structure below you, right? Like your minions and stuff. So you'll get bonus points if you collect ones of the same color, which I'm assuming could be like family members. I don't really know. Um, it's got a hidden bidding thing, which I like. And it also has simultaneous play because it's like simultaneous bidding and action selection and all this other stuff. So that kind of excites me because it's supposed to be like a heavier euro where, yeah, the theme's kind of tacked on, but there's good strategy. It's actually pretty simple to go with once you start with it. And it works for one to four players. So I'm pretty excited about that one. So excited that I actually pre-ordered it. This was one that was available on Kickstarter. I did not Kickstarter it, but I did pre-order it. So I'll be picking it up at Gen Con before I've even played it. Montanai, Mont Montini, Montanai, something. It's from As Mandy, As Mandy, not As Day, As Mandy Games. Um, it's from uh, Carl Trudic. Tr Trudic. Oh my! I'm like feeling it all of these. <sighs> anyway, it is the successor uh, or re-implementation of Glory to Rome that's coming out from the designer of innovation and also Glory to Rome. And so I'm really excited because I've never actually played Glory to Rome because it's hard to get a hold of. And yeah, but everybody is like, Tiffany will love this game. And I love innovation and I like all of Carl's games. So I this is like a no-brainer for me. And if I could pre-order it to guarantee I'd get a copy, I would. So yeah, I'm really excited. Um, it's a re-implementation of Glory to Rome. So it is a card drafting, hand management, set collection game um, where you are... I think you're monks in a temple, and the translation of the game's name is don't waste, because you're like trying to like use every card to the best of your ability, and like every card has multiple different ways that it can use it. I know that um, Imminent Domain and um, Imminent Domain, definitely from Seth Jaffe, was like designed kind of as an homage to Glory Rome, and I love that, so I love Imminent Domain, so I'm really excited for this one. This is definitely my number two pick for Gen Con, and it would be my number one if my number one wasn't, if it didn't exist. Thanks for those sound effects, EG. <sighs> Last on this list, but my most anticipated game of Gen Con is Spirits of the Rise Patty by Philip Dubarry, published by Ape Games. This is another one, there was a Kickstarter, and I like, ah, I just couldn't back it. I really wanted to. I actually went to Gen Con 2014, and this was on my buy list at Gen Con 2014, and of course they didn't have it, they just had like demos, but the demos were like at weird times, and I never actually managed to get a demo. It's got worker placement, area control, or area entrapment, uh, it's got card drafting, it's got like... Uh, tile placement, simultaneous action pool, you are farmers growing rice and like you can get ducks to eat your pests that are in your fields and like all this other stuff. So yes, this is basically Steve and Tiffany Bait. It's more Tiffany Bait, let's be honest. It's Tiffany Bait. Um, but yes, I am very excited for Philip DeBerry's Spirits of the Rice Patty and this is on my buy list and I'm gonna buy it and I'm just gonna play it. It's gonna be amazing. Very excited. So yeah, that is my Gen Con top 10 list, but but there are some um, honorable mentions on this list, uh, on another list that I prepared for you guys, because some of the stuff that's coming out at Gen Con is like super awesome and I'm super excited about, but I already either have copies or have played it and like I'm like, I'm good. So I'm just gonna like give you guys the honorable mentions list. Oh my goodness. All right, so first off, we have Trombon. Trombon is um, coming from Mayfair Games, and it's a two-player game where you are building tram lines in Germany. So there's like four tram lines, and oh, I just really like this game. I picked it up at Origins, and Steve and I have played it once, and then I've played it with my mom, but like, I really like this game. It's like a more in-depth, crunchy, thinky Lost Cities. So you know how Lost Cities if you've ever played it, it's a two-player game by uh, 
Canincia. Uh, but uh, so in Lost Cities and in Trombon, when you play a card, you have to play in ascending order, but they don't have to be contiguous. But like you get bonus points if you get a certain number of cards in a line and you score points. And it's just Trombon. It's super awesome. If you are a big two player player and you like like card games that have some good depth and thought, Trombon. Definitely pick up Trombon. Next up, we have Lanterns by Christopher Christopher Chong. Ah, I'm really bad with names. Lanterns uh, is co-published with Foxtrot Games and Renegade Games, and they're gonna have a booth with it being sold and with Gravwell, which you guys know I already like. Um, I love Lanterns. I had a preview copy of Lanterns, and we loved it so much that we backed it. And then we have another copy of Lanterns, and like, I love Lanterns. Lanterns is a great game. It's tile placement, and it does some really interesting set collection stuff. And as a matter of fact, I think Steve and I are gonna play it here in a little bit. So yeah, Lanterns is a good one. Um, next up, Stockpile. Stockpile, I can't actually remember off the top of my head who did Stockpile, but I played Stockpile at Starfest in Denver back in April, and I really liked it. Um, it was a Kickstarter, and it's now, you can buy it at these shows, and you can get it at Gen Con, you could get it at Origins. Um, but it's like, it, it's a very good stock manipulation game. There's some like, hidden buying stuff with reveal and it's it's very interesting um i did enjoy it the we played the easy game and like the hard the harder game is like just it it's it's spot on the only thing is like i kind of wish they had a different like layout graphic design board thing but that doesn't take away from the game at all so stockpile um then we have evolution flight so evolution flight is the expansion for evolution i haven't gotten my copy yet but i did back this on kickstarter um evolution is a fantastic game and flight just is apparently a fantastic addition to this game so we are really excited to get that and um i hope it gets here before we leave for gen con because it would suck if i just had to buy another copy so i could play it immediately Next up is Rise to Power. Um, J.R. Honeycutt from Nerd Nighters turned me on to Rise to Power, so Steve and I picked it up at KublaCon. Um, and yeah, we really like it. It's actually, hey look, it's right here. Rise to Power. Um, in this one, you are building like cities with cards and you, um, you have to like balance how much power you can use in your cities because each of them like uses power and resources and stuff like that. So it's a very interesting twist on city building. It's pretty, it's pretty like light, I would say, but you can do two to six players, takes half an hour. Um, we really like that one, especially for like the box size and the price point. It's a good solid like 30 minute game. Um, also next up, New York 1901. So New York 1901, <laughs> I have a cat down there apparently. New York 1901 is um, coming up from Blue Orange Games. I got a chance to demo it at Origins and they were kind of like saying that it's gonna be like Blue Orange's Ticket to Ride and I don't think it's, it's like more interesting and complicated than Ticket to Ride. Um, I might pick up a copy, I might not. It, you are building skyscrapers in New York and like you have to like buy property of certain types and then build them up and then like you get points at the end for like having the tallest or largest skyscraper on like certain streets. So um, it's interesting, it's definitely a level up from Ticket to Ride and I feel like um, people will be playing it and talking about it, but I, I don't know. I I don't know if, it, if, if it's enough to be in my like desire to buy list like I don't know if it if I had to pick like a buying list I think it would probably be like in the top 20 but not in the top 15 if that makes sense from all the stuff that I went through I have a very long list here for I have 35 items on my Gen Con wish list and um, New York 1901 is not not high up in that list um, so there's that. Uh, then I also really want to check out La Granja, um, which is a reprint coming from Stronghold Games. It's apparently like a super solid game, super awesome, and it's Tiffany Bait. So I want to check that out, get a demo of it, see if Steve and I would play it. Um, we obviously have a lot of games of like similar weight that haven't even been opened yet. So um, yeah, I don't think we'll be adding one of those potentially. Oh. Um, 
so there's that. And then, last but not least of the honorable mentions that I will probably be picking up for sure is Mysterium from Asmodee. Um, they redid the art, so um, Mysterium is a Polish game that po uh, Portal Games was putting out, um, and you are a ghost and you're doing, it's like Clue and Dixit mixed, and it's gotten a lot of buzz and I've played it a number of times. You can actually see in my uh, Origins video right here. This, I, we play 1901 in this montage, and we play uh, Mysterium, so I will be picking up the Asmodee version of Mysterium because I don't have Mysterium yet, and I feel like me getting Asmodee version and like sharing that with you all would probably be beneficial to see if, one, the art upgrade is like comparable with the Polish one because the Polish one's like spot on, and then two, to see if like the rules are solid and make sense. So yeah, check that out during the Gen Con vlogs because I will be vlogging at Gen Con. Yes, I will. Steve and I will both be there and we will both be vlogging. Um, I'm not sure how that's gonna work, but I think if we ever split up, like we might have two different cameras going, something. Um, so yeah, we're experimenting with that potentially. So yeah, check out this channel for stuff on Gen Con and also super exciting news that will hopefully be launching next week or being announced next week. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what I, I'll probably announce it and talk about it a lot next week during my vlogs. But yeah, also if you are not able to go to Gen Con, check out GenCant.com, link down in the doobly-doo or you know, like right here. GenCant.com was started last year by my friend Susan and it is this awesome thing for people that can't go to Gen Con. She gets a lot of publishers and game designers and stuff to donate awesome prizes that you can win if you are not going to Gen Con. And some of these prizes and games are actually Gen Con releases. So you could get a game from Gen Con, even though you didn't go to Gen Con. It's super awesome, sign up. They're also doing a solo con, so people that can't go to Gen Con and also wanna do solo games, um, solo con is like another thing that's happening this weekend, and Ichi is barking cause Steve's back! <sighs> she just attacks him when he comes home. <laughs> All right, I will see you for Gen Con vlogs. And I hope you guys enjoyed this top 10 list. And if this is something you would like to see from me in the future, let me know. Now that my house is chaotic because Steve's back and everybody's excited about it. Hey, babe. Steve! Steve! Hey. Steve! Hey, babe. Hey, hey, babe. Hey, hey, babe. <laughs> our, our, Ichi loves us and Ichi. Steve. Ichi, where's Tiffany? Where's Tiffany? I don't think it works as well. All right. Toodles!